My name is Ben Sidberry. I'm a partner at Austin and Bird in Charlotte, um, and I'm joined by uh, Noelle Valentine. I'm a senior associate at Austin and Bird. And we're going to be talking about today um, some pointers on uh, finding jobs and the job search in law firms in, in this economic market, uh, particularly looking for jobs in geographic markets other than where you're in school or where you might be presently located. Um, and, and so with that said, we thought we would first start talking about the resume and cover letter process. Um, Noel, do you have any suggestions for how one might go about tailoring their resume and cover letter for the, for the particular employer? I do, and I think it's really important more than ever, Ben, probably more so than when we graduated, to really make sure that you know who your audience is and what you're applying for and that you take any experience that you have, whatever it may be, whether it be work experience, life experience, and tailor your resume to the job that you're looking at as well as your cover letter. And as you and I both know, having gone to school in one state and applied for jobs elsewhere, if you are looking, you know, at a destination job, so to speak, it's really important in your cover letter to explain what your connection is and why. Um, I think employers are really going to want to know how, you know, how you're connected to the city, why you want to relocate, and that's part of the tailoring process. Is that your, do you agree with that? I, I agree. I agree completely. I think you have to write for your, your particular audience. And, and I guess the follow-up point is that the resume and cover letter are really the first of many steps, certainly not the only step. Um, and, and with that said, you know, I think a lot of people may make the mistake of, of sending a resume and cover letter and, and sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring for an interview. And, and unfortunately, in this day and age, that's just, that's just not the case. I, I don't, you know, I can't emphasize enough that the resume and cover letter, while it, while it may be the first step, it, it's probably one of, you know, 10 or 12 steps. Um, and, and so with that said, I, I have some ideas, but do you have any particular suggestions, Noel, for, you know, how a candidate might go about following up with a firm after they've submitted their, their resume and cover letter? Well, I think a lot of it is, you know, some of the common sense things, I think you do have to write your thank you notes to all the people with whom you've interviewed, certainly. And if you do find someone during the interview process that you have kind of a good connection with, I think it would be appropriate to kind of make that follow-up call, you know, say that you enjoyed the interview, say that you, you know, that you are interested and just want to stay in touch. You have to be careful with that and make sure um, you're not following up too much. I'm not suggesting that you call someone 10 times, but um, definitely a follow-up call is worth it. How about in your experience? Yes, I guess two, two suggestions. I mean, I think, the, again, the, the following up, I think, is the, is the most important part, although, although you know, sometimes less is more. <laughs> um, but, but I guess I have two suggestions. Um, when you submit your resume, that, that's obviously, as I said, sort of the first of many steps. But, but I think there, there, there are two suggestions I have. And this first one really applies more if you're applying for a position in a city other than where you are living currently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times in this day and age, and this has always been true, is a potential firm or employer probably doesn't want to invest the money to fly you down on their nickel. But um, if you can pick a long weekend or pick a few days to make yourself available in that area, um, and go down there, that, that may tip the scale where, where, they, they, where they then might be inclined to, to meet with you because it doesn't cost them anything. And that mm -hmm. shows them, number one, that you're committed to that area because mm -hmm. you've, in fact, made yourself available there. Um, number two, as I mentioned, it doesn't really cost the firm anything because you're, you're there. Um, and, and, and number three, it, you know, if you can use that you know, to open the door to, to at least meet people initially, even if it's for 10 or 15 minutes for a cup of coffee or a breakfast, that escalates you from a pile of resumes mm -hmm. to now a, 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 a live person that they can associate with. And, and in that regard, sort of the second point that, that I had, and this, is, this would be true for whether you're applying for a, a, a job in a geographic area other than where you are, or even in the same geographic area, is find some, some contact person, you know, where you've applied, um, you know, hopefully you can find some common denominator with some lawyer at the company or the law firm, whether it be uh, a Syracuse law alum, you know, an alumnus or alumna from your undergraduate institution, at the bare minimum, a lawyer that at least 
practices the same area of law in which you want to practice and, and reach out to that person after you've submitted your, your resume and cover letter. You know, after you've submitted your resume and cover letter, maybe send another copy to that person and suggest a, a meeting. And, and, and I think the most important part is make it hard for them to say no. What, what I mean by that is don't just send an email and say, I know you're very busy. Can we meet at your convenience? Let me know what works for you. Give them specific choices. Say, you know, I'm going to be in the area next Thursday and Friday. Can we meet for breakfast Thursday at 8 a.m.? Can we meet for coffee Thursday at 9 a.m.? Can we meet for lunch Thursday at noon? Can we meet uh, Thursday afternoon at 4? You know, give them very specific times to where they can make a choice. Make it hard for them to say no as opposed to making it easy for them to delete um, your, your email. And do you have other, other thoughts? No, and I, com I completely agree with what you're saying. The other thing I think that's critical, and I've been a little bit surprised at this sometimes, is when you are writing the partner as, or the person that you're going to contact, and as Ben said, make it hard to say no, attach a copy of the resume that you have submitted so they can kind of get a feel for who you are. But also make sure, have someone else look at your resume. I know that's like resume 101, but make sure that your resume is accurate and correct and does not contain any typos. I'm consistently surprised by um, the number of resumes I get where there's a, something like a spelling error. And like it or not, I think lawyers tend to be judgmental about those types of things because we pay so much attention to detail. So just make sure um, that everything you're submitting is absolutely correct. Uh, all, all good points. All good points. Um, let's talk. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about, um, you know, maybe how you go about seeking out alumni or others, um, you know, I think we both agree that when you're, you know, when you're, when you're applying for a position, you know, after you've submitted your resume and cover letter, you, you then seek out, you know, alums or others. Do you have any suggestions for, you know, how you might go about either contacting alumni or people that, that you might have some connection with, uh, either as a, as a means to get in the door or as a, a follow-up to, to sort of make an introduction to somebody else? Well, sure. Um, I actually got my job at Austin Bird through an alumni. You, Ben Sidberry, <laughs> helped me get the job here. And I was able to contact you utilizing the resources at the law school. So I worked through career development at that time. I know the alumni office is also very active in making sure that alums are in touch with either um, current students or people who are seeking jobs. So definitely use the resources that the law school has. I have also found that there are very active alumni associations kind of scattered um, throughout many of the major and secondary cities. And even if, you know, um, you can find a connection to either the College of Law or to Syracuse University, and either of those connections can be very, very strong in terms of helping you make the introduction. Go Orange. Yeah, I mean that, that's exactly right, and I think I think the other related point to that is with the alumni network, which is vast, you know, geographically, um, it, it's important to keep in touch with with alumni, particularly if you're in the job market, because you know, presumably, even though you're going to meet some alums that that may not have needs at their current firms for hiring, or may not have needs in the area in which you're looking, or both. Um, you know, it's entirely possible, though, that if you make a favorable impression on that alum, um, you know, even though they don't have hiring needs at the time, that they may be able to, you know, call one of their friends or colleagues at another firm or company and say, I I've met somebody you need to take a look at here. This, this person would be great if you have those needs. And so the point is, you know, e even though you, you meet somebody and you form a good bond and they say, hey, gee, I really just don't have a need right now, um, that, that is a, a great potential matchmaker, if you will, for, for employment uh, elsewhere. Um, and then I guess lastly, you, you mentioned sort of the importance of following up, but not too much. Right. Um, <laughs> do, do you have thoughts on, on kind of the art of, of following up after you've, you've made a contact or after you've made an interview? What's enough? What's too much? Kind of where the medium ground is? Well, sure, but I think that's part of the art of reading people. Um, it's very important that, you know, once you have made a connection that you really spend some time figuring out what that person's going to look for. And sometimes all people want is a follow-up email and a note, and sometimes it's a phone call, but it's, you know, generally people are, tend to be very, very busy, and I think only in very special circumstances are you going to form, you know, kind of a, a best friend, call you all the time relationship. 
And I think, again, people are busy. You do have to recognize that. Um, as Ben has said, make it difficult to say no, but just be, be cognizant of the time constraints that everyone in the legal profession is under. Yep. All, all good points. Well, those are our suggestions, and that is our podcast, and uh, good, good luck in the, the job hunt.